why, 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 why? Where's the y's? Where do the y's start? How do we get to x's? Hey everyone, on this episode of Coding with Kate, we are going to be talking about external cause of morbidity, which is a chapter in the ICD-10-CM Diagnosis Code book. I received a question on this topic and I had to admit that I hadn't had much experience with this portion of the code book. I didn't spend too much time on it, but today we're gonna work through it and hopefully it will help clear up any confusion. To understand this chapter or this section of the code book, external cause of morbidity, we need to understand what that means. And the diagnosis code book essentially is saying what is the intent or the environment in which an injury happened. What caused it? And usually with these, it is car accident, falling on a treadmill, being hit by an object, things like those that describe what was occurring that caused this issue that occasioned the visit to the healthcare facility. And as you read through textbooks on this section, it will say that not all physicians or healthcare facilities require you to use these codes. So you may never have to use any of these external cause of morbidity codes to describe why this person came into the ER or the physician's office, etc. But as I read through, it also says that some states have mandated that you do use this. And the reason for it is quite interesting. So I'm going to read verbatim out of the textbook. So it says, coding external causes of injuries and other conditions provides valuable data for research and evaluation of injury prevention strategies. So that's really interesting that this information isn't just for the healthcare provider. It is for the larger picture. So the community and everyone outside of the healthcare facility will know what injuries may happen from certain objects activities, etc. It isn't pertinent to how the healthcare provider treats the patient. It's just for extra information for them and for other agencies that need that information when it's useful to them. Quite fascinating. And it's actually interesting reading through all of the different external cause and morbidity codes. Quite interesting. But to actually look at the book specifically, these codes are in chapter 20, so near the very end of the book. And the beginning of the codes start with V, W, X, or Y. So the external cause of morbidity is right after the big blue section. It is specifically the green section here. This green section. So here's the list of the different categories or blocks within chapter 20 that is covered. Accidents, transport accidents, slipping, tripping, stumbling, and falls, exposure to inanimate mechanical forces, exposure to electric current, radiation, and extreme ambient air temperature and pressure, exposure to forces of nature, legal intervention, operations of war, military operations, and terrorism, misadventures to patients during surgical and medical care, and supplementary factors related to causes of morbidity classified elsewhere. So that is the range of what these codes cover because there's a lot of ways people get hurt and they need to have some differentiation when they want to acquire all of this data. Instead of just saying person injured, we would like to know how the person got injured so then we can analyze that data specifically with those different types of events that caused whatever injury. So it, co it covers a lot. Now the one question I've always been wondering is the word morbidity, because I associate that with dying. So let's go on to Google here and ask about morbidity. See if we can get more information on why they use that term morbidity, because I think that might be something that throws people off, especially when they're first learning coding and learning about this section of the book. So the dictionary says morbidity, the condition of being diseased or the rate of disease in a population. Now, 
clearly ICD-10-CM uses that term diseased a bit loosely because yes, you might get injured doesn't mean you have a disease, but in this sense, we are looking at how people get injured and using that data to analyze how often it happens, what activities are more associated with certain injuries, how often these injuries are happening within the year or in an area, etc. So that is what they mean by morbidity. And I will say that you will also see in the ICD-10-CM code book at the very bottom of all of the pages, it will say HCC, CC, NCC, when it's talking about comorbidity and complications and all of that stuff. That technically doesn't have to do with using the code book. That is more with reimbursement. So that is different from external causes of morbidity. For me, that was something that was confusing. I thought they were the same thing, but they are different. So the morbidity, the complications, all of that stuff, those little notations at the bottom of the page are not directly linked to the chapter of external causes of morbidity. Know that they're completely different. helps, I guess there's a whole nother index. Who knew? Where's this index they speak of? Oh, see, this is what I mean where I didn't spend much time with this section. There's a whole nother index. So the external cause of injuries index. So if you come across a op report and your facility does use external cause of morbidity codes, and in the op report, it says this person received this injury because something that sounds like an external cause. We would know to go to the external cause of injuries index, which is after the table of drugs and chemicals. So you have the index, you have the neoplasms table, and then you have the table of drugs and chemicals, and then finally external cause of injuries index, which is in a light gray color. From there, you can look for the type of injury or accident or event that caused the injury. The sequencing with these codes are important. You cannot use an external cause of morbidity code as your initial or principal diagnosis. It can only be an additional, so it has to come second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. And within these codes, if there are multiple events that happen that cause multiple injuries to the same person, there is a specific sequence that you need to look at, take into consideration, and follow. So, this is the hierarchy that they have. External codes for child and adult abuse take priority over all other external cause codes. So no matter what, if child abuse or adult abuse took place with this event or within these events, that external cause code will always go first in the line of external cause codes. External cause codes for terrorism events take priority over all other external cause codes except child and adult abuse. So if for some crazy reason, child or adult abuse took place along with terrorism that caused multiple injuries to that one person, you would put child and adult abuse first and then your terrorism code second in the section of external cause codes. Because remember, these codes cannot be the principal diagnosis. So keep in mind that we have our principal diagnosis first and then we have child abuse and then terrorism. And then external cause codes for cataclysmic events take priority over all other external cause codes except child and adult abuse and terrorism. So let's say child or adult abuse happened along with terrorism and a tornado. That's a cataclysmic event. All of those happened at the same time causing multiple injuries to this person. We would put child and adult abuse first 
and then our terrorism second, and then our cataclysmic event third. And then external cause codes for transport accidents take priority over all other external cause codes except cataclysmic events, child and adult abuse, and terrorism. So let's say in this crazy event that the there was child and adult abuse, there was terrorism, and a cataclysmic event like a tornado, and there was a motor vehicle accident that caused multiple injuries to this same person, we would then put child and adult abuse first, terrorism second, cataclysmic event, the tornado third, and then the transport or motor vehicle accident fourth. And then activity, activity of external cause status codes are assigned following all causal or intent external codes. And then you would put the status code last no matter what external cause code or codes you are going to be using. Now, what is an external cause status code? I have no idea. Let's find out. So the external cause status codes are other codes that describe more about the environment of when or where the event happened. Now it says that the, the place of occurrence, activity, and status codes are in the Y section. So let's go to Y and figure out what that means. So that's at the end of external cause of morbidity. All right, so here are some of the examples of the activity, status, etc. So we have one option, civilian activity done for income or pay. So the person was at work when they had this injury. Military activity, meaning they were a military professional, I guess you'd call it, and they were on active duty, etc. that sort of thing. Volunteer activity or other external cause status. So activity not elsewhere classified, activity of child or other family member assisting in compensated work of another family member, hobby not done for income, leisure activity, off-duty activity of military personnel, recreation or support not for income or while a student, student activity. And then also unspecified external cause status. So if the op report didn't give any information about where they were, what they were doing, you would use the unspecified external cause status. And that is external cause morbidity. Kind of interesting, especially since you have a wide variety of different events and injuries, etc. But know that you may work in a healthcare facility that does not require you to use those, meaning you will never use them. Or you might, who knows? Just know that they're there. Know that they are additional codes. They do not go in the principal diagnosis or your first listed diagnosis. It's always supplemental. It will come second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. Know that within using those codes, if there are multiple that are needed, there is a specific sequence. And read the guidelines for that. And know that you also need the codes for the activity or the status, etc., if it is given to describe more about that external cause, that injury, how it happened, etc. As much information as you can get because in ICD-10-CM and other coding aspects, you want to code to the highest degree of specificity and detail. So hopefully that made sense. If you have any questions, let me know, and I will hopefully be able to answer them. And let me know if you want me to go into more detail on anything else. And know that you can subscribe to this channel. If you want inf more information on ICD-10-CM, ICD-10-PCS, and CPT, and a and whenever I throw it in there, you can comment below, as I said before, and let me know if you have any other ideas on videos or any topics that are troubling you that you'd like a video of me to explain it, and I will try my best. And then also you can like this video if you enjoyed the topic, and hopefully... I'll have more videos like this talking about ICD-10-CM and some of these other categories or words, etc. that pop up that we don't always know about. 
I'll have some of those thrown in there. And I will see y'all later. Bye!